Hello everybody. This is the scene I've been working on since the last video. This is the arena which for now is just a plane with a checkerboard texture on which we summon a cube using some easy checkerboard logic. The arena receives instructions from the card table using the card place controller. And you can see it looks quite similar to the arena right now. We know where we place the card using these colliders and using the associated name of the game object. Here we have the big cards that are, our, are in our hand and we reuse the same mesh for the smaller model that's going to be used on the card table. For now we have a reckless friendly fire dwarf, a not cool mate spell card and a fireball card. Concepts will be improved in time. For the cards I created a simple mesh in Blender that has attached to it two different materials. Uh, one for the front and one for the back. We do this so we can use only once the texture for the back and have enough space in the texture for the front one. Those are basically two spheres, one within each other, with a transparent material. Now, how did I manage to add all these VR capabilities, you ask? Well, most of them are inside this free Unity package called Oculus Integration. Once imported, you will have everything you need inside this folder named Oculus. All you have to do is delete your, your main camera and import the OVR camera rig prefab. Open build settings and switch your platform to Android. Open player settings. Put a company name and the product name. Make sure you put a correct package name combining those two. Set the minimum API level to at least 19 and enable virtual reality supported and add Oculus here. Oh, and almost forgot, remove Vulkan from graphics API so you make sure the build works. Connect your Oculus Quest and press build and run. That's it. Now you have the most basic Oculus app ever. Hand tracking setup. Now that you can see around, let's add hand tracking support on this thing. For this, select a VR camera rig and make sure hand tracking support is uh, either controllers and hands or hands only. Search for OVR hand prefab and put it inside the left hand anchor and right hand anchor. Each prefab has an OVR hand script and has uh, components for the skeleton and the mesh it's rigged into. Make sure the left hand has selected hand left in these three places. Make sure the right hand has the same thing in those three places for the hand right. Enable physics capsule on the right hand since we will use it for the toggle in the future. Et voila, now you can see your hands, although they do not do a thing. Grabbing a card is basically having your hand really close to it and putting your thumb and your index finger together. You stop grabbing when you stop pinching. For this, our hands should have a behavior that inherits OVR grabber class. Notice how most scripts in Oculus integration start with OVR. And the cards should have a behavior that inherits OVR grabbable since we should know they are grabbables. Also, make sure each of them has a rigid body and a box collider, and our hands has a rigid body and a sphere collider. Make sure those are set to trigger. Let's look at our grabbing behavior that inherits the OVR grabber. Inside the grabber, we will check at each frame if there is pinching. If we don't already hold an object, there is a valid candidate close enough to our hand, and we pinch hard enough, we call begin grab from the inherited class. Otherwise, if we already hold an object but we don't pinch hard enough, we will release that object by calling grab end. Whenever overriding an existing method, be sure to call the base method first so you don't break any existing behavior. Don't hesitate to look into the parent class as you will learn lots of stuff. For instance, you could see it works out of the box with a touch controller. Now let's look into the gr card grabbable script that inherits OVR grabbable. All we do here is we wait for the grab end to be called and then make sure our custom behavior is called. If you randomly release the card, it will come back up where it was at the start. Otherwise, we tell the arena manager to summon a cube and we will instantiate the prefab of the smaller card on the table. That's it, now you can grab a card. We summon the cube, but it's annoying we cannot see a thing because of our huge cards. But we have to keep them huge so we can read the small texts. This pokeable sphere works as a toggle to hide show the cards. There are two states, hovered in the outer sphere and active in the inner sphere. 
For this, we inspired a lot from an existing script called Fingertip Poke Tool, which is inside the Sample Framework folder inside Oculus. This folder has several other useful tools, as well as some example scenes inside the Usage folder. This script works well together with Button Controller, which has three zones, the Proximity one, Contact one and Action one. I am a minimalist, so I'll make my own, stripped down version of this pair. This is our version called Fingertip Poke Interaction. We do all the logic inside the coroutine because we do not know when the hands manager is going to be instantiated and initialized. After that, we get the fingertip of the index finger of the right or, ha or left hand based on a boolean. All this can be found inside hands manager. What we do is get the capsule collider on that bone and then attach to it a custom component named bone trigger logic. Remember to check Enable Physics Collider on the hand you use it on. We add the Burn Trigger Logic component, so we can recognize it on our toggle behavior when it enters the trigger. It would have been easier to give it a tag or to put it inside a layer, but I went the OVR way. That's it, now we can listen inside the toggle game object in the function on trigger enter or on trigger exit and do whatever we want with it. For instance, we will change the materials of the spheres and make sure to hide or show the cards based on those states. This week I went through setting up Oculus, adding hand tracking and learned how to poke and grab objects. Check out the examples inside Oculus sample framework usage for more interactions. In the next video I'll implement a couple more interactions and then start doing the same for controllers. We'll also implement controllers since the hand tracking is a bit wiggly for now and it might be annoying on the eyes to read the text. Also, I might improve the placing card logic since it's tricky to place a big card in a small place. Questions, feedback and future suggestions are more than welcome. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. See you next time!